Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of Muay Thai Save Me. My name is Crew Neil. Across from me <laughs> is a very special guest. She's the love of my life. Her name is Ruth Devereaux. Hi baby. Hi baby. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so for the listeners who are just, you know, catching in, tuning in on our episode, yeah. uh, Muay Thai Save Me, right, is an episode, uh, is a podcast that we bring on, you know, guests that speak about how Muay Thai has, um, you know, impacted them in certain ways, right? And I thought it was such a great idea to have you on the show. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize, right, but how it is to date someone in my position, yes. right? Um, I, I own two Muay Thai gyms. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working long hours. I work every day. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't realize that you're also a producer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so we both have really busy schedules. Yeah. And I know recently I've had a few uh, few people who are in relationships and they're like, Kunio, how do you do it? How do you work seven days a week? Yeah. You barely get any sleep. And then, then you have this girlfriend who's like the love of your life, you say, and like, Oh my gosh, right? How do you make time for her? Yeah. And I thought this would be a great episode for us to share, yeah. like to the people that maybe are going through the same thing and they're going through some trials and tribulations, they're going through some turbulence. Yeah. And maybe I thought we could share some cool insight of what we do in our relationship yeah. to make it work. What do you think? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. But um, just real quick, um, could you tell everyone that's listening and tuning in right now? who Ruth Devereaux is? Um, I'm Neil's love of his life, um, first and foremost. Hey. <laughs> um, I am a producer by trade. I produce music videos. Um, I'm developing a television show right now. I also work on events sometimes. Um, I have very, I have spurts of busy time periods for sure, where it's, um, there are times when I'm not getting home till maybe like two or three in the morning. Mm. Um, I'm on calls till maybe midnight sometimes. Um, but then there's other times where I have nothing going on mm. and so it's like an up and down for sure it's an interesting career path and you know um i want to kind of tap in a little bit to how you said um you're a producer now yeah did you start being a producer no 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 i first came to la to act and okay. um quickly realized that was not the path for me mm. and then i worked at studios for now, actually why was that why why was acting not your thing so i have a control problem where i have to have some control <laughs> of my life and i get nervous <laughs> if i don't so therefore i had to um it, with acting, it was like you were giving so much power to somebody else. It was like mm. you had to wait for somebody to give you an audition. You had to wait for somebody to say that you were right for that role. You had to wait and see if they marketed or edited or created that mm. piece to be something that showcased you in the best way. Like all you had control over is showing up and doing your best and then hopefully somebody's saying yes to you. But then mm. after that, there's nothing. And then also it just like the the road to success is so uncertain. And it still is even in producing, mm. but a lot less certain for my opinion at least in acting i know there's some people that that's their passion and they should consistently pursue that mm. but for me it just didn't work so okay. but i wanted to work in the entertainment industry and mm. so i just thought if i worked at the studios i would be a part of like the storytelling in some form or fashion okay. um and then i just applied every day um it was it was an interesting path just because like a lot of people that work in the studios, they have to go to college, they have to have a degree. And I didn't because I was pursuing acting at the time. Um, so it made that kind of like hurdle to jump so much mm. bigger. Um, but I just kept being consistent with it. And I got okay. really lucky and got connected with somebody at one of the studios through submitting that he saw my resume, was going to call me in, mm. um, and then ended up hiring somebody prior to me getting called in. Um, but then I sent him a Starbucks gift card as like I a love, thank you. I love this story, by the way. I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. So you sent him a Starbucks gift card. I sent him a Starbucks gift card. One of the parts of the story that I don't, like I don't generally tell, is the reason he remembered me after me sending him that gift card is for some reason it didn't work when he went to go use it. Oh, and no. So, <laughs> oh, no. He, <laughs> He was like, what the heck? It was a legit card. I did pay yeah. for it. I did send it. And he didn't tell me until later on when they brought me back in and I got hired and we became friends. And he's like, the card never worked. Oh, no. <laughs> I love that. Um, but, That's I'm, awesome. but I'm still friends with him to this day. Um, I That was my first like kind of step into mm -hmm. the industry in a professional level. And I'm actually still friends with my boss from that job, too. Um, so I was there for a couple of years. Um, I originally wanted to get into development. 
And then the more I learned about that, it wasn't really like my bag, at least in the corporate side. Um, and then I got into, P I got really interested in PR mm. and then I ended up working in PR for the studio. Um, I left there, I did events for a short time in between where I actually did uh, the Dalai Lama's birthday, which was an incredible experience, got to meet him. A lot of hard work, but such a great memory and such mm -hmm. a great experience. And then I went to another studio and I did licensing and marketing. And then when I was there, I thought I wanted to produce. Um, I told a girlfriend about it. Um, we went out to dinner and I was like, I think I want to produce. And she was like, well, how do you get into that? I'm like, I have no idea. Mm. The next day she had dinner with a friend of hers and he's like, I got funding for this movie. I want to make this movie, but all my producers are men and it's a story about women. I need a female producer. Wow. And she was like, I have the perfect person for you. Wow. And that was how we came together. And that was how I produced my first film. That is so cool. Yeah. And people don't understand like that's how how that industry works right yeah. it's the the connections it's the networking Absolutely. it's no and never burning your bridges anywhere yeah. right and just keeping your network system up yeah. and up i mean i think the great thing about the entertainment industry is like you can choose who you want to work with mm. and like a lot of like my producing partners now are two of my closest friends mm. and like they're like family to me because i trust them so mm. much and we continue to work together because i would rather work with them than work alone ah i see I see. It's like that old um, adage, right? It takes a team mm -hmm. to go far. You oh, know? Don't, you can't totally do anything does. by yourself. No, nothing. You really can't. In, in any kind of business, like mm -hmm. taking entertainment industry even out of it, like in any business, you have to have a team that you can rely on. Nobody, nobody gets to the top alone. That's right. Even like uh, uh, fighting, mm -hmm. right? You know, even though there's one fighter in the ring against someone else, it took a whole team to mm -hmm. get that fighter prepared and and taken care of from recovery to nutrition to training, yeah. you know, um, strategy, like everything, it takes a team. It's yeah. so it's so cool that you mentioned that because yeah, it is. It's very um, worldwide. It's yeah. uh, every every industry needs a team Absolutely. to be successful. And so I love that story, baby, because it's like you start from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. To just, you know, being an actress. I think it was modeling first, modeling photos, and then became an actress. Mm -hmm. And then, eh, that's not for me. And you just kind of worked your way up the rankings. You yeah. learned different areas of the, yeah. of the industry. I will say that I think that my path was interesting because I started actually in business affairs. So I saw like the negotiation of the contracts, like mm. how deals are made, like what where it starts from. Mm. And then to go into PR and see how it's promoted. And then go into licensing and marketing and go like, okay, now it's like, how do you make money off of products? How do you work with mm. brands? Like there's so many different avenues that exist within entertainment. And I was very lucky to be able to be a participant mm. in all of those areas. I love that. Again, it goes back to like consistency and you, you had a vision, you had a dream mm. yeah. and you were trying things, right? Yeah. You're trying things. No, nah, it's not for me. Nah, it's not for me. Yeah. And eventually you found your calling. I think Tim Ferriss said it. Um, there was like the visual of like a, Door of a walkway where you're always fearful you're going to take the wrong turn and he had like this maze visual where it's like if you keep trying to find the right door you're going to eventually make it to the right place mm. so many people are afraid to make a step because they're like what if i choose the wrong step but if mm. you continuously look it doesn't matter if you take one wrong door yeah. you have another door to go through i love that i love that so baby mm -hmm. so let's skip all this right we've covered the career stuff yep. which i love um we fast forward Muay Thai actually brings us together, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Right? Thank you, um, Robert Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Robert Brown, one of our ambassadors. Um, so it's it's funny because I've known your, technically he's your stepbrother, mm -hmm. right? I've known your stepbrother for like, geez, like 10, 10 plus years. Yeah. And... Uh, Which is so crazy. I can't believe you guys knew each other for so long that you knew my nephews for so long. Yeah. And like, I had no idea. Yeah. And... Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Right. I didn't even know he had a stepsister. We didn't even Thanks. know. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember, uh, yeah, 10 plus years ago, he signs his boys up. Well, one of his boys, Josh, first, because mm -hmm. he was old enough. And then when Jordan became of age, he signed both of them up. And that started our relationship. I remember when Rob... Robert helped me move gyms to gym locations. Yeah. Him and his boys would help me because they, they love the place, oh, you know? Yeah. So we've... We've uh, created a relationship, you know, throughout the years. And Robert's always told me, like, 
He doesn't trust anyone with his kids. Yeah. He's very particular of who yeah. he brings. And the fact that he felt comfortable with me leaving his children with me while they trained, he could go run errands, mm -hmm. come back, and he knew his boys were taken care of. And mm -hmm. it, it's funny. So that's right. Keep in mind, we come to find he actually wanted to set us up. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, what I appreciated in what he did, it was never pushed upon us. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, let's get them in the same place at the same yeah. time and just see what happens. Yeah. He, and even after it happened, he's like, I mean, I knew you guys would get along. I didn't know how quickly. <laughs> <it would happen. laughs> I remember he said that to me too. Yeah. And I, it's funny cause, um, you know, he, He's been telling you about the gym and stuff, and you're just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? You're just kind of brushing well, it I off. I wasn't thinking anything of it. Like, even when I, at one point, I was starting like a women's group, and he was like, oh, yeah, you guys should come and like do a self defense class. And he was like, he wasn't pushing the issue, but he kept, he brought it up multiple times, but mm. I didn't think anything of it. Mm. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny you brought that up right now because I remember him mentioning to me years ago, like, Hey crew, would you be open to like teaching like a women's self-defense class? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. He's yeah. like, okay. And he had an idea and he's like, yeah. all right, I'll get back to you on that. And then it never came about anymore. That was probably my fault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready, honey. Yeah. I wasn't ready. <laughs> so we fast forward and, uh, how does Robert finally get you into the gym? What's interesting, actually, before we even get to that point is like, because he just told me about this recently, is the reason he even thought like it was the perfect time for us is that he had a conversation with me and um, I was with him and his girlfriend and I told them that I was just going to be alone for the rest of my life, mm. that I was going to be a cat lady and I was totally mm. fine with that. And then I guess it, the, in the same time period, he had a similar conversation with you where you were like, I'm fine being by myself. And for some reason for him that like clicked it in the head where he mm. was just like, this is the perfect time for them to come mm. together, uh, which I thought was super interesting that he was able to um, not only like the the bells going yeah. off, right? Like, oh my gosh! And then it like correlated for him so perfectly where he was mm. like, now it's time, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but so how he got me into the gym was you guys were doing a special for um, I think it was the like month month of December. I yeah, think it was. I think it was like Black Friday sale mm. and. Um, he didn't call me. He didn't give me a heads up. He didn't tell me anything. He bought the month for me and he posted it on social and tagged me in it. And that was how I found out. <laughs> and I was like, I guess I'm going. <laughs> um, how was your first experience with Muay Thai? Cause now it's yeah. like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm jumping in this. Totally. What, okay, what is this? I was, what, I think it was great for me too, because I didn't get to see Robert a lot. So like when I was coming to like the classes, I was able to see him like every night. He like brought me a pair of gloves, like my first class. Mm. He like got me like the wraps and everything. Mm. He got me all set up, but I was still really nervous. I like, I felt like the first couple classes, I was like really close to him the whole time. Cause I didn't know what to do. Mm. Um, but then the more I came, like, I think the best thing about the community that you guys have built is everybody's so inclusive. Mm. So even somebody that's walking in, that's new, instantly people want to help them want to like make them feel comfortable i think so many times you can walk into big settings especially as a woman and feel ousted in certain ways because like either people don't want to talk to you or make you feel like you're not part of the clique and so like you feel kind of like uncomfortable mm. for a long period of time whereas like this community as soon as you walk in instantly people are helping you and you feel comfortable nobody's making you feel like lesser than because you don't know and they mm. know more than you do they're actually encouraging you and reliving their past experience of them not knowing as much when they first came in mm -hmm. i love it. and how and that made you feel better right like Absolutely. more like oh, like a nice exhale yeah well it felt like it gave me the time and space the freedom and the safety to learn without feeling judged mm. and then it just was fun and then you felt like not only was it fun you were getting a workout but then you were getting to know people that, that you really liked mm -hmm. Nice. Baby. And then loved. Nice. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I'm not going to get into our details of it, you know, but I just That's remember. private. Yes. <laughs> Some things have to be private, right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> but Most like, people know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember, like, we hit it off so fast. Mm -hmm. um, and fast forward, you know, you're, you're dating someone like me, who's mm -hmm. always busy, yeah. very driven, yeah. have goals that I want to achieve and, uh, you as well. Yeah. And, and like you said earlier, right. Um, 
Sometimes you're working crazy 18 hour, yeah. 20 hour days, coming back at 2 a.m. Um, then only to get a little bit of sleep and get back on set again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on top of me and my little sleep, yeah. um, people always ask like, man, how do you guys do it? Like, how, how do you stay functional for her, yeah. right? How do you stay functional for him? How is it baby like, you know, when you don't have project, you're, I mean, yeah. you're all constantly on calls every day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Constantly strategizing, building things, this and that. Then you got events that you're working on as yeah. well. But what, how do you, for maybe other women who might be in the same boat as you mm -hmm. and, and myself, like, um, how do you handle that, um, that time apart right, from one yeah. another, right? Cause I'm always working when you're not on set, you're yeah. kind of, you work from home, you get yeah. to work remotely, but how, how does that, does that put a strain on you at all? Do you, do you ever I feel? Think, uh, to be completely honest, I think the beginning of our relationship, it was kind of like, it was probably like learning how our schedules function together because it obviously if you're first walking into somebody's life you're you're not only having to learn about them you're also like wanting you want a lot of time with them you want to get to know them you want to like consume them as much as mm. possible yeah. um and i think so i think at the beginning it was like the question of like well does he like me and like how do i know that because we're not like together that mm. often i think the thing that you do in spades is when you're with me you're with me so even though I guess like, yeah, on a clock, it might say like, oh, we only have this amount of time together. There are some couples that have more hours together, but don't have as much like actual valuable time spent together. Mm, that connection. Yeah. Too, right? I think that what we do is like the time that we do have, it's so concentrated on like, not only like showing love for each other, but growing with each other and building each other up. And like, I think even now, like we'll still check in, even if we're not together, check in throughout the day. So we know where each person is at throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important too, to, to recognize like you're an important part of my life. I want mm -hmm. you to know what's going on in my day. I want yeah. you to know where I'm at, what I'm thinking, even as it's as small as like today when there's two spiders on my wall and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> I need you to know this. <laughs> But I, um, I really do think it's the fact of like taking the time, regardless of the amount of time you have with your partner, making it very concentrated and making sure that you make them a priority. Because so many people, yes, like you would easily be acceptable to come home and be like, I'm tired. I don't want to talk. I don't want to like, like interact with you. I kind of want to zone out. Yeah. And anybody would understand that. I honestly don't know how you do it, but like every day you come home, you have the energy for me. You have the positivity for me. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to me. You like want to like engage. And like, I think that's what helps us stay connected and grow. Absolutely. And one thing to piggyback off that too, baby, is um, the reason why I'm able to do it is because you are my one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, this is why I always tell people like, it's so important to build your self value, right? Um, I've worked on myself for the last five to six years, like, uh, like crazy. And I've built up, a, I've always had a high standard, but it, my standard has just increased so much. And I know you've been working on yourself yeah. as well. And um, we just met at the right time. Yeah. And because I had a certain standard and values that I looked for in a woman and I was not going to accept anything less yeah. and you had the same. Yeah. Um, and I, so guys, fun fact, she had a checklist, <laughs> 13 things I believe was the correct number. I think it was about that. Yeah. She had about 13 things written down and on our first date, she said, I checked off on every single one yeah. and she knew and it was funny because after my date with her i came home talking to myself in the mirror um excuse my language i was like i'm gonna fucking marry this girl like i said that to myself in the mirror not once but twice i repeated it <laughs> with the curse word so i knew i had never said this before in my life and i just knew yeah. because i had a standard and i knew what i was looking for in a woman and i also happen to be that same guy for you. Mm -hmm. And one thing I would encourage people that are dating and looking for a partner, the best thing you could ever do is know exactly who you are, yeah. what you like, what you don't like, what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to yeah. tolerate. And once you have that list locked in, don't ever 
um, play with that. That's your yeah. list and that's your list. And well, don't to, let anyone ever tell you different. Even expand on that list a little bit. I think a lot of people will say like, oh, this is what I want in a partner. What this chart was, was a list of like the top qualities where it ranked, like what was, what were deal breakers? What were like, where it ranked in like importance to me, what were signs that somebody possessed this quality and what were signs that somebody didn't possess this quality. Mm. So there was like, so much detail that went into actually creating mm. and fi filling out this list that I think that it really helped kind of like when I, when I met you, when I spoke with you, when I interacted with you, your energy, who you were, like how you represented yourself. Like, I'm like, it was so clear to see mm. that you were this picture perfect person. <laughs> um, thanks baby. Thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like a lot of people just you know, they don't build themselves up first yeah. and they try to bring in a partner thinking that's going to fill a void or a hole that yeah. they might be missing. But it's actually the opposite. You got to fill, you got to be complete. You got to yeah. be in love with yourself first and you got to be the person that you want to attract. Yeah. Right. And, when, and can I add to that a little bit? Cause I think that so many times like people, I think you build up yourself. I don't think you have to be that perfect person. That's right. I think that you also grow with your partner. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like, I feel like there's still things that I'm growing in as a person, but you help me with that. Mm -hmm. You um, encourage me. You like you support me in places where I feel like I'm weak. You show me that I'm strong. Like that, your partner can provide to you, but you do have to have a certain basis yes. prior to that. But it doesn't have to be perfect. I, I don't want people to feel like, oh, I have to fix everything and then yeah. I'm ready for a partner. But you do need to have some some level of that. I love that. Yeah, I love that because that's so true and. That's one thing I love about Ruth too, is that you, you're always, I always say it all the time. You're always able to allow me cause I see only one lens, one perspective. Um, but you always are capable of allowing me to see things from a different perspective through mm -hmm. a different lens and it always brings things. And you kind of just did that right now. Mm -hmm. And I love that cause you reiterated some details that could be, um, explained better. And I love that you did that. So thank you. I love you. And, I love you. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to get all mushy. Yeah. But um, trying to keep it professional. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do at home. <laughs> no, I love you. Okay, continue. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, um, just kind of going back into what we were saying, uh, I... I, I also do want to touch on, like, I think when we first started dating, two things that you introduced into our relationship almost instantly were the weekly check-ins mm -hmm. and the book club. Yeah. And I thought those, like, have made us grow so much faster than even maybe we would have without that. Because the weekly check-ins, for me, it's not even just a point, like, of saying anything wrong. It's more so even remembering, like, all the great things you've done throughout the week, how it mm -hmm. affected me reminding you of that and and vice versa as well mm. and then like with the books that we've read in the time we've been together we've learned so much together where we've been able to even like utilize that and refer back to that at certain times like oh remember when we read this and this like i think that this is this scenario mm. and we can connect on that because like it was something that we consumed together yeah i love that and it's funny because um a shout out to albert preciato and his wife sill um they just did a driven event um, last weekend um, at the Hyatt Regency Hotel um, by the LAX airport. And it's funny because I got that idea from him mm -hmm. and his wife because um, they they do a weekly like check in with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's no holds barred, so to speak. It's like they don't hold anything back. It's yeah. they talk about compliments. They, they compliment each other. They talk about anything that bothered them in the week, any issues that they're having. Yeah. And it's an open floor with no judgment and they allow each other to speak mm. and they don't interrupt, you know, and then they find solutions and work together. And I was like, mm. I love that. Yeah. When I find the right partner, I would love to do something like that. And then when I met you, I told myself, everything I've done in the past has not worked. Mm. I don't want to mess this up. So I said, moving forward, what do I need to do differently? And yeah. that's where I did the, the, the weekly check-in, yeah. which I think has been a game changer Absolutely. for us because we don't get a lot of time to spend together yeah. and acknowledging the good things that we do for one another that sometimes people don't think you see it, but yeah. then when you get acknowledged for it, you're just like, yeah. oh my gosh. And yeah. what does that do? It, it encourages us to want to keep do doing more, it because yeah. my partner loves it that yeah. I do that. 
So I obviously want to keep doing that yeah. for you and, and then some, right? But I think also in, in addition to that, what it's done is like outside of even those meetings, because we've had that communication level with each other, we've never had a fight, but like mm -hmm. when anything has been needing to be brought up, we do it instantly That's right. because that line of communication was created and maintained through yes. those check-ins. Absolutely. And that totally has been a game changer because yeah. I know we both agree there were some moments where that could have, for a normal relationship, that would have easily popped off into something bad. It would have been Absolutely. an argument, but because the line of communication was open from day one, we were, we felt comfortable that we could express our feelings and we were both um, open yeah. to hearing and then trying to find a good solution Absolutely. so we can make each other like, you know, we can move forward, right? Yeah. As a really, as a couple. Yeah. And I've, I've always appreciated that because, you know, these are ideas that are great, but at the same time, both of us have to agree to it. Yeah. Right. Because I could be bringing that to the table and you're like, that's stupid. Yeah. Right. But what I would say is if you're with someone who thinks that's stupid, Probably not the right fit. Uh, you <laughs> remember Full House? They remember Full House? Try it out. Cut or maybe it try out. to understand why they feel that way. They were, might be underlying conditions, but if they don't want to communicate, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And that's ultimately the, always the case is Absolutely. the communication. Huge. But granted, if, if the relationship was started from no communication at all, it's going to be hard to really hard open to that door yeah. up. It, it really is. So yeah. it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. Right. And. Yeah. What people, I want people to understand too, is like, although you hear all these great things about me and Ruth, um, people need to understand we put the work in we though, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, granted, we are, there are some weeks, there's some weeks that we might miss it due to our busy schedules, yeah. but we always do it no matter yeah. what. And I know sometimes I've traveled to um, out of state conventions yeah. and we're on we'll a video FaceTime, call yeah. and, we'll, and we'll do a, um, and we'll do our check in yeah. together. Yeah. We've done video call weekly book readings, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. That's one thing I really enjoy too, baby, is mm -hmm. because it's like couples that grow together, stay together. Mm -hmm. We're both constantly expanding our minds. We're both putting the work in and we're doing it together. Yeah. And one cool fact that I want to share with people that might be tuning in is that we actually take turns reading paragraphs. We do. And it, yeah. it keeps us both engaged. It's mm -hmm. like a cool dynamic. And I, well, and I, I recommend that for anyone. I even told you, like, you, I used to be, like, really scared of public speaking. And I feel like I've gotten better from reading out loud to you. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're but, my audience. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love it, though. Yeah. Like, it's the coolest thing ever. And you're right. Um, and then being present for each other when mm -hmm. we are together. Yeah. Um, I, I know like I can't give you all the hours of the day, but I know when I can, regardless of what I've been through, the stresses, the yeah. daily problems that I've dealt with, um, different people, you know, different team members, like there's always stuff going on, mm -hmm. but making sure when I come home, this, this is, this yeah. is me and Ruth time, you know, Inner and circle. I'm, and I'm, and that's right, our inner circle. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's one thing I would recommend too for you, any couples out there, like anytime you guys are having an issue, yeah. keep it between you and your partner. Um, the worst thing, and I learned this from Steve Harvey um, and Method Man, which I thought was really cool. They both said the same message, just in a different way. Yeah. But they all said the, the problem with relationships is if me and you are having an issue, Instead of talking to one another about that yeah. issue, Talk they actually go to an outside source, whether it's a family member, a, a best friend, yeah. a cousin, and they give you a different type of uh, advice, maybe through experiences that they've gone yeah. through, and that could be either good or bad. Yeah. And then you bring that advice coming in and with your partner, and then you're not really being transparent. Yeah. You're actually giving someone else's perspective, and then it causes issues. Yeah. And um, that's one thing I really took from those two guys, Steve Harvey and Method Man, shout out to those guys. But we've implemented that in our relationship. Yeah. It's been a game changer. And mm -hmm. I know now, like anytime I have an issue, I'm going straight to you. Yeah. Um, if I have a problem, anything, I'm going straight to you because I know you're my safe place. Yeah. Um, there's no judgment. Yeah. Um, I can talk to you about anything mm -hmm. and you're going to um, do your best to give me a non-biased opinion. Absolutely. And that's what I love. And yeah. that's something guys for you couples, you can't be biased it's because it's your girl. Like you got to tell them if they're in the wrong, if they're not thinking like the right, correct way, 
Uh, you have to give them a non-biased opinion because it's only going to help them grow and vice versa. Guys, you also have to be open to hearing what your woman has to say as well yeah. or your partner has to say because at the end of the day, you love each other. You yeah. only want the best for one another. And sometimes you got to have these weird talks and yeah. hear things that might hurt your ego a little bit. But yeah. if you're open to problem solving and finding a solution that works best for both parties, I mean sky's the limit for what Absolutely. we can do together right yeah. baby and all you other couples out there yeah, yeah i love it yeah, me it's too. i i truly feel baby i feel like um soon we'll probably start our own coaching program yeah. you know what i mean because yeah. i i i know we get a lot of your friends will hit you up and say oh my gosh i love tell me more about that yeah. you know and i have people also asking me yeah. like Kudio, like how do you do yeah. like how do you i get a lot like how do you have the energy? Yeah. Like, how do you not want to crash out? And I'm like, well, think about it. I barely get enough sleep already. Mm -hmm. And what, so I have two things I can do. I can just try to get more sleep, but ignore my partner, mm. who's the love of my life. Mm. Um, and I look at it as life is short, yeah. right? She could get up the next morning, get hit by a car and I never see her again. And because I wanted to sleep in, <laughs> I don't get that time with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's how I look at it. I don't care what I go through when I'm home. I got to be uh, present for you. And I want to show you that I care, I love, and I'm all there for you. So that way, even if we spend 30 minutes, I want that 30 it minutes to be memorable. Fulfilling. Yeah, always. I mean, even this weekend, like you had like a long day and like still you called me afterwards and you're like, we haven't had a date night. We're going out tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it's like those things too. A lot of people, I mean, you're getting, I'm getting educated eight hours of just different yeah. speakers feeding my mind of all kinds yeah. of awesome knowledge. And then, um, you know, and then I, yeah, I got off yeah. and I was like, it's still a decent hour. Like, and I told myself, let's go on a date. Hopefully she's up for it. And you were, yeah. we had an awesome night we together. Did, yeah. Um, and it was like an awesome recharge and it was just that connect, that yeah. connect that we get. Yeah. I mean, like, I think we've talked about so many times too, like we'll be at home and the TV won't be on. We'll yeah. just sit there and talk to each other. Absolutely. And I, I saw something recently where they were like, there's a difference between like being attracted to somebody and being connected with somebody. And they said, if you can sit in a room with somebody and enjoy their company, there's a connection mm -hmm. instead of being distracted by either an event you're going to or the like devices. a thing that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah, that's another thing that we also do too is every weekday we don't turn on the TV. Yeah. We literally sit and talk. Uh, my, my baby will cook me like one last meal for yeah. the night before I go to sleep. And then uh, we just sit and talk. Yeah. And it's just the connection. And the, I know that has also kept our relationship yeah, strong. Absolutely. Because of the um, communication. Like communication. overall, it's the communication that we have consistently. Absolutely. And one thing too is, um, you know, Ruth also expressed to me like, baby, I want to know about your day. Because mm -hmm. I've had ex-partners in the past that are just like, you always talk about the same thing. Yeah. And one thing I loved about you is you were open. You're like, baby, I want to hear that yeah, stuff. I, I genuinely want to yeah. know what you're up to and like how you're doing. How's your day going? I want to know like the littlest thing because like that's a, that's going to affect you, right? Like if something, even like somebody cut you off on the street, like when you come home, if there's a little annoyance in you, if I don't know that, I might take it personally. That's a stupid example. But like yeah. if I don't know every little piece of your day that affected you or that like stuck with you, like how am I going to understand what you're feeling at the end of the day? Yeah, absolutely. Game changer. Mm. Bam. If people mm. just implement that, bam. <laughs> Mic drop two times. Hey, hey. <laughs> but man, I'm trying to think like if we've kind of shared what we wanted to share with like, well, I, I feel so. like we've covered yeah. the main points. And we points. can do another one too. Okay. I'll come back on. Hey. I'll come hang out with you. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Thank you, honey. Thank you, baby. Um, but guys, if, if we covered any topic or anything we covered and you want to know a little bit more information feel free to drop a comment um below and then i'll do my best to reach out to you and maybe i'll even have again ruth come back on the show and we could talk about it together yeah. okay but i thought that would be fun and guys i'm telling you right now like if you really want to be happy um in a relationship i would totally recommend everything we talked about from open communication yeah. weekly check-ins uh, start a book club so you guys are growing your minds together. Um, 
make sure you spend that quality time, no devices. Yeah, addressing problems head on directly with your Absolutely. partner, not with everybody else. Absolutely, and if your schedules don't align, that's what the weekly check-in is for as well. You you have time for the good and you yeah. also have time for the bad. Yeah. Um, and it just keeps that open line of communication going. And that way you guys won't have any fights that explode into something crazy, yeah. you know? Um, and two books I wanna recommend uh, for the, the mm -hmm. people, the listeners out there is number one, learn your love language yes so read that book um what, what, oh my god the five love languages i forget the author's and, name and then fierce love and fierce love yeah. those two things guys will really help shape your your relationship help it enhance and just be that much better and if you just started dating someone this is the best time to implement it now yep all right but guys uh, thank you so much for uh, joining our Muay Thai Save Me podcast episode. Ooh, My name is ooh. Crew Neil. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, episode. Remember, if you have any comments or any questions, feel free to drop it down below and we'll get back to you. Um, if you like this video or any others that we've done in the past, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for next week's episode. See you guys then.